Why was Sega of America's Chief Executive Officer Tom Kalinske given Gamer of the Year by Electronic Games Magazine in 1994? Join me on a journey to discover who Tom Kalinske was and why he was so important to the gaming industry in the 1990s. Tom Kalinske would start his career at a toy company called Mattel where he would work from 1972 to 1987. In 1973, during his time at Mattel, he was managing the Barbie and the Hot Wheels brands. And in that year, Barbie would grow from 42 million to more than $550 million. Hot Wheels business would also grow to more than $100 million. He also worked with the team that launched the Masters of the Universe toy line in the early 80s. He would then go on to become CEO of Mattel from 1985 to 1987. Tom Kalinske would then serve as CEO of Matchbox, a toy car rival of Hot Wheels from 1987 to 1990. During his time, the company would return to being profitable and then was acquired by Tyco in 1993. Tyco was then purchased in 1997 by none other than Mattel. This brings us to the gaming industry in the early 1990s where Nintendo had dominated the video game market since the early 80s. Sega of America would create a console war that's still waging on today even if the players have changed just a little. Tom Kalinske would serve as the president and CEO of Sega of America from 1990 to 1996. He would make very aggressive marketing decisions during his tenure such as price drops. Christmas of 1989, the year the Sega Genesis was released, it would be priced at $189 where it would remain through all of 1990. By Christmas 1991, a year after Tom Kalinske was made CEO, the Sega price would drop to $149 and by Christmas of 1992, Sega Genesis would drop to just $99. During Tom Kalinske's reign at Sega, they would release a lot of anti-Nintendo attack ads, and the infamous screaming of the name Sega was born. Sega! Other ads would compare prices with Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. Gotta go. Hey guy, you're the first serious gamer I've seen all morning. Check this out, brand new 16-bit Super Nintendo with Super Mario World. Wow! Oh, what's this one? Oh, this is a Sonic the Hedgehog from Sega Genesis. Hey, look at these radical colors, huh? Wow, Sonic's fast too. No, over here. I like Genesis, and it costs a lot less. We kid. Compare the speeds of Mario versus Sonic the Hedgehog. Danita Stokes, president of HAG. It's bad enough that Sega Genesis has the most 16-bit games, but this new Sonic the Hedgehog, oh, he really duffed my doilies. They say he's incredibly fast. Well, what's the hurry, mister? Hmm? And about his attitude. Smarty pants. Why can't it be more like that nice boy Mario? Oh, oh, oh. little brat. Claim Genesis does what Nintendo don't. Genesis does. 16-bit arcade. Make fun of Game Boy's black and white display versus Game Gear's color display. <sighs> Whoa. Color. Hey, there's an easier way to get color. Get a Game Gear, the full color portable with over 150 games. Compare buying Nintendo to death. For those who purchased something other than a Sega Genesis. Yeah, that's it. Our sincere condolences. What a waste. When you start with a Genesis, you can always add a Sega CD and new Genesis 32X. Everything else is cold and stiff. Burial or cremation? Burn it. Welcome to the next level. Making fun of Nintendo for not having a CD console. Hey! You still don't have a Sega CD? Huh? What are you waiting for? Nintendo to make one? <laughs> you have seen the games, right? Uh, Wrong uh, answer, man. Show them! Uh, <laughs> 
want to see more? <laughs> and claim that playing the Sega Genesis will make you popular at school and stop bullies. Young Bobby Engels has a problem. He needs to earn the respect of his peers. So he gets Sega Genesis, the ultimate action system. And then he buys Mortal Kombat, the arcade edition, and the all-new Shinobi 3, and Marvel's X-Men. Now things are pretty much okay. I said chocolate chip. Say it. Say it. Dang it, dang it! As extreme and aggressive as these ads were, they weren't. Because during Tom Kalinske's time at Sega, he would grow the business from 72 million to more than 1.5 billion dollars. It would lead to Sega taking over as the number one leader of the video game industry. Something that hadn't happened since Nintendo took the spot in the early 80s. Tom Kalinske's other claim to fame with Sega happened in 1992. Senate hearings were ongoing regarding video game violence, and Nintendo decided to try and capitalize on this and throw Sega under the bus with their game Night Trap due to its violence and sexual aggressions against women. The plan backfired big time because Tom Kalinske decided to fight the Senate by showing that the average Sega Genesis player was 19 years old and that 72% of the Sega CD market was over the age of 18. Tom Kalinske was very outspoken about the potential censorship and argued to the government that video game developers should be allowed to express ideas the same way books, movies, and television could. In a letter, he said, Censorship like this cannot be tolerated. No government can call itself a democracy when it takes away the people's fundamental right to choose. Sega lobbied to get the video game industry a rating system similar to the Motion Picture Association of America. In the end, Sega would win and the Entertainment Software Ratings Board was created with Sega fully behind it. This is why Electronic Games Magazine awarded Tom Kalinske with Gamer of the Year in January 1994. His efforts and leadership would have huge lasting impacts on the video game industry with his fight against the government over censorship and his leadership at Sega that started a console war that's still going on. While the console wars probably fought more with consumers than companies today, the competition has led to a very healthy gaming industry which has produced a lot of great games over the years. So had you heard of Tom Kalinske before? I definitely remember the Sega commercials growing up, but I hadn't heard of Tom Kalinske until recently when I was flipping through the Electronic Games magazines. Comment below on whether you agree with Tom Kalinske being given Gamer of the Year in 1994 or maybe your favorite Sega commercial. As always, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell to keep up to date on my latest videos. Click the thumbs up if you enjoyed watching this. Thanks to all my current subscribers. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.